The absolute pinnacle of luxury travel for me this far in my travels. First class on the Qatari 380 from Doha out to Bangkok. I have never been this excited showing up for a flight and I hope you'll enjoy the journey along with me. I booked this for a steal of 50,000 American Advantage miles and it was more than worth it. So now let's go hop on board. I hope you enjoy. Our day starts just after midnight where we're walking over from the Hamad International Airport's parking lot. From here the airport design is already on display with a beautiful mosque and a great lighting and fountain arrangement. Here at curbside the main signage is for Qatar, mostly economy class, but at the close end the first door is specifically for first and business class travelers. When an employee saw me filming my content, they rushed over to help me with my bags, which was a great surprise because I was expecting them to ask me to stop recording. Once inside, an employee was waiting to greet me and escort me to the beautiful first class check-in area. The check-in area for first class passengers is unlike most airport check-ins. It's in a private area backing up to a window to give you some extra privacy, and instead of walking up to a counter, you instead sit down for a consultation style check-in where they take care of everything while they bring you refreshments and a hot towel. They took care of setting me up with lounge access, checking my bags, and keeping me comfortable. They even gave me a nice hard plastic Qatar First Class luggage name tag. Once check-in was complete, after about five very comfortable minutes, I headed off to the private immigration check and security lane. Similar to British Airways first wing at London Heathrow, first class passengers have their own dedicated check-in area that essentially funnels you exactly where they need you to go for your own private immigration and then on to the lounge. Qatar also has color-coded boarding passes depending on which cabin you're traveling in. The same also applies to the bag tags for cabin luggage, which they did weigh at check-in. Once through immigration and security, there's a direct entrance to the world-renowned Al Safwa Lounge. There's a second entrance as well from the main part of the terminal. Any passengers traveling in a first-class cabin on a departing flight gain access, as well as the highest One World Priority members. Access can also be purchased on a limited basis for about $140 if space is available. Once admitted access to the lounge, you'll enter this wonderful hallway with a nice but hinted natural scent and calm music playing to set that relaxation early. In this hallway, you'll also find assorted art like this first main painting. Further down, you'll also see things like these ancient artifacts from the Arabian Peninsula and North Africa, dating back what seemed like thousands of years. There are a couple of fountains inside the Al Safwa Lounge. The first is on the left side of the main hallway, and it's a falling wall style fountain. Across from that is the spa where you can get all kinds of treatments or take a shower, and also quiet rooms where you can get some rooms for sleeping. At the end of the large hallway is a main centerpiece fountain that's made to look as if water is free flowing and appearing and falling into this large tub. One space that I did find myself spending some time in is the media room, which is a soundproof room that has a large TV where you can set the channel to watch all kinds of different things, and it seemed as if you could also put your own entertainment on that screen. But because it was soundproof, the ambiance in here was perfect for fully enjoying your show. Having traveled all the way here in economy for many, many hours, I decided to take advantage of the showers. So I went off to the spa area, asked for a shower, which they quickly prepared for me, and then guided me to my shower room. Now the interesting thing is they do use the shower suites also as part of their spa treatments. And so when you do get access to your shower suite, you'll usually notice different types of spa amenities. And if you did choose to order a treatment, you could also get that in this room, followed by a shower. Although today I opted to just clean up with a quick shower. The shower suite comes plenty stocked with basically every amenity that you could need in terms of cleaning up and taking a shower. Things like brushing your teeth, getting your hair ready, shaving, using any sort of bath amenities you might need. Whatever you can think of, it's probably already here waiting for you.
After showering, I decided to find some place to get a nice rest. After all, if I can sleep here, I can fully enjoy the airplane while staying awake. They do have these little pods, which are very similar to the business class lounge here in Doha, where you can relax in these sound enclosed walls, and there's spaces to charge your phones and leave your bags while you hang out there in the meantime. In addition to that, through these sliding doors, you can access this terrace of sorts, which is open air, if you want to think of it that way, in the sense that it's open to the rest of the terminal, even though it's on an elevated level up above. So down below here, you can see the main part of the terminal, which is pretty dead at this time of day. But if you do want a place to sit, this was pretty empty for the majority of my stay in the lounge. And something that I did not take advantage of but is available to passengers using this lounge is a baggage check. So if you don't want to lug your bags around with you, you can go to the counter which is inside the lounge and ask them to check your bags for you. And when you're ready to head out to your flight, you just have to go get your bags back. Just make sure you don't forget them when you leave for the flight. Tucked away on one little corner here is a business center. In there you can access computers and printers and whatever you might need to get some of your work done before getting on board your flight. But just across from that is the lounge's own personal duty free store. Now obviously it doesn't have as much stuff as the main duty free stores within the terminal, but if you're planning on spending all your time in the lounge and you're still looking to purchase maybe some alcohol or some cigarettes or something like that, you can find it right here in the duty free store specifically for the El Safa lounge. I ended up being able to get a little bit of work done here in the media room while they had some news playing on the TV. I just enjoyed how quiet it was, only the sound of the TV playing in the background. After that though, I decided I would go find something to eat. Now there's a couple different dining options. They do have a deli over next to the desk inside the lounge, which you can go get quick grab options, custom sandwiches, or quick bites. I decided that for my food before I got on board my flight, that I would enter the full sit down experience of the lounge. Now breakfast starts at 4.30, so because I was about to head out to my gate, it was basically breakfast time, so I decided I'd get a nice breakfast here from the lounge, in which the menu is literal multiple pages long. Endless options of breakfast options, lunch options, drink options, and one of my favorite things about a lot of these Middle Eastern airlines is because a lot of the people traveling with them don't drink alcohol or they fly to dry countries, they do have plenty selections of mocktails as well. So if you are looking for a fun crafted drink that maybe doesn't have the alcohol in it, Qatar might be the place for you. I was able to get seated near the window so I could have a view once the sun started to come up by a wonderful Ugandan gentleman who was very attentive throughout my entire time here, never hesitating to come up and see if I needed anything and was always nearby in case I had to flag him down to place an order for any drinks or food. While I picked out what I wanted to eat, I decided I'd start off with a nice glass of sparkling water from a nice fun glass and a nice mango smoothie. Shortly after that though, I placed my food order which started with a cheese plate and a fruit plate, the selection of which was fantastic, although in hindsight, probably too much food considering I got an entree as well and then got on a first class flight. For my entree, speaking of which, I went with the smoked salmon bagel which came with asparagus and an egg on top, and on the side of that came some Arabic coffee and of course an Arabic date as well. Once that was done, to wrap up my meal I decided to get a nice cup of some English breakfast tea, as of course if TWG tea is available, I'm always game. By the time I had finished my breakfast, the sun had basically completely come up, affording great views of the ramp and all of the Qatar Airways aircraft, although my A380 was not yet in sight. To get that, I'd have to leave and go out to the terminal, which I did do next. I actually left the lounge a little bit early so I could explore the Hamad International Airport, which has recently been voted the world's number one airport of the last year. Now as I mentioned before, there is an entrance that goes directly into the main part of the terminal rather than coming from security, and so leaving the lounge was super easy as all I had to do was head down this escalator which is very close to the transfer customs, and I was out into the main part of the terminal. Now if you've never been to the Hamad International Airport, it is definitely deserving of being one of the world's best airports. 
as the atmosphere throughout the entire airport definitely meets that title. For example, we're here in the main atrium to start off with. If you were to leave normal customs, if you were a departing passenger from Qatar, you'd end up right here. Here you can see the famous Lamp Bear statue, which was donated to the airport by the owners. From this main hub, there's the branches that come off of it. The Alpha and Bravo gates come off the left and right, and straight down the middle is the Charlie, Delta, and Echo gates, which will take you off to the gardens, which we will get to very shortly. Now one thing that I think they do really well at this airport is all the different textures and materials that went into making this airport really mesh together really well to give this airport a great atmosphere. In addition to that, all of the shops and restaurants all have their own decorations and themes as well. Throughout the airport you will find things like this fun jungle gym off to the right where there's things for people to do and different types of art installations for people to see throughout the airport. Right now, all the Seagates were US bound flights. For example, here at C11 is the San Francisco flight. The airport's set up in a way where you can pass through security and bag check on your way to your specific gate so that you're free to roam around the rest of the airport in peace. Here at the end of the Seagates, you can see where the original terminal used to end before they added the extensions onto it, largely due to part of the expansion while the airport became bigger and especially in preparation for the World Cup being here just this past year. But from this point on is where you reach the gardens and a much more scenery. One of the things you will see off to the right here is the Oryx Airport Hotel. If you are here on an overnight layover, you are able to book a room at this hotel. The nice thing being that it's inside immigration and security so that you don't have to worry about clearing those customs again for your next morning departing flight. Just past that, you're going to find a number of shops in addition to the Oreo Cafe. So if you like Oreos, this is the place for you because just about everything they've got there involves Oreos in one way or another. Just past that, we pass most of the duty-free shops and we're off to the gardens. Now, Singapore's Changi Airport might have started the trend, but Hamad International Airport followed suit. We've arrived here at the orchard, or the large gardens here at Hamad International Airport. From in here, obviously much smaller than Singapore's Changi Airport's gardens, and it's also inside security, so only ticketed passengers are able to access it. But you do have a number of shops and restaurants scattered throughout the gardens, number of walkways, and even though it's not as big as the one you'll find in Singapore, it is a very comfortable place to come and relax. Throughout the gardens they have all different climates, you can see the misters and everything like that so that it's kept at a nice temperature, especially considering how hot it can get here in the UAE. You'd never be able to tell considering these gardens are fully enclosed. They use the misters and the fountains throughout as well as the sunlight from the glass roof in order to keep all of the plants thriving. Now if looking down on people is what you'd like to do, you can head up on this treetop walk and do just that from up above on the treetop walking platform, which takes you basically across the entire gardens in a serpentine pattern so that you can get all the views of the different parts of the gardens and the shops. Kind of nice if you're trying to scope out the different restaurants and figure out where you want to eat. There's also no shortage of places to sit. You can see this enclosed area here within the trees. There's also a large number of benches scattered throughout. Also these little teepees where you can come get a more enclosed space for people to sleep. And you did see a lot of especially families hanging out in that area. And the fun thing is that some of the gates are embedded within the gardens, or I guess I should say just past the gardens. So it is kind of fun if you are departing from one of those gates. Now, if you're not feeling like walking all this much, or maybe you're unable to walk this much, don't worry because they do have a train system that can take you around the airport. It does have a few stops, they're basically trying to get it to reach all the gates, except that at the current moment it is not set up to reach the A and the B gates. But other than that, it will help you get around the airport a little bit easier than having to walk everywhere. I use the train to get back towards the main atrium of the terminal, back kind of where the lamp bear statue is and all the different wings, where I headed off to the B gates, where my fly would be departing soon, and I looked at what was left of the World Cup souvenirs.
Now as I mentioned before, the gates are set up basically so that each flight has its own enclosed gate area, and this is depending on how much security that flight needs to have. For example, the flight that we're going to be departing on to Bangkok only has a document check, whereas the flights to the US also have an additional bag check for your carry-on bags. But all you got to do is approach the counter, the counter agents will go through your documents once they verify that you have the correct items, you're able to proceed into the gate holding area. For those passengers traveling in first and business class, however, there is a separate entrance where you can go upstairs, and if you are boarding an A380, it does give you your own private seating area and jet bridge. Upstairs is an area much larger than they could ever need for this amount of passengers. As you can see here, pretty much every business and first class passenger was up here already, and it wasn't even close to half full. But what it did afford was better views of the ramp that were less obstructed just because there was less people. From up here, I got my view of my first ever A380 that I was going to step foot on. Obviously, I've seen them around as my home airports of San Francisco has had plenty of A380s in its history, but I've never been able to step foot on one until this moment, and getting this great view of it was fantastic, especially alongside its sister A380, which was heading off to London Heathrow. Shortly thereafter though, they called for boarding. Now the lower deck had actually already shortly begun boarding before that, but because there was not a lot of people upstairs, they were able to hold us off a little bit longer and then put us on the flight shortly after. On boarding, we got to see the special white Qatar 777, and past that was multiple Finnair aircraft. Now, Finnair doesn't necessarily serve Doha. However, because of the A350 issues that Qatar has been having, they've actually been assigning other One World carriers the Qatar Airways routes. In other words, you're booking a Qatar Airways flight, but it's operated by one of the other One World carriers. Wasn't my problem today, however, as we got on board our Qatar operated and Qatar branded A380 in the first class cabin. And one of the main differences between first and business class is that the business class passengers were pointed towards their seat, whereas the first class passengers were personally escorted to their seat. Just a little bit of an extra touch for those passengers that were traveling in first class. And here it was, the Qatar Airways A380 first class cabin. Now I was only the second person to reach the cabin, so I had a pretty private feel until people started filling up. It was only just over half full, I believe five of the eight seats were full on this flight. But upon first impressions, the seat was absolutely massive. Only drawback is it didn't have a closed door, but as we know, some of these people nowadays, they don't necessarily need a closed door as long as they still have privacy and luxury, and this seat afforded just that. Now as far as the seat itself, it was super comfortable and very wide. It also came with two pillows of different firmnesses so you were really able to personalize your comfort. In addition to that, we were also given a very nice blanket that was super warm and although I didn't use it considering I was kind of warm on this flight, I did use it on my A350 video if you haven't checked that out and these blankets are amazing. One thing that I always like is when they give you a partner seat belt here. So if you are traveling with someone, they can use this footrest as a seat. They have an authorized seat belt so they can remain there. And especially when dining comes around, they're able to share the space with you. Although only if that passenger is traveling in the first class cabin as well. I'd say one of the drawbacks of the A380 is just the depth of these windows. As you see here, there's quite a big difference between where I can reach and where the actual edge of the window is. It does affect my view as I wasn't actually able to see the engines from my seat except for a little bit of one of the lips. Now one thing that Qatar Airways is definitely known for is the attention to detail and you can see all throughout the inside and outside of my suite, there was no lack of attention to detail on the seat. As I was still settling into my seat, they came around with a very large glass of champagne, a nice warm towel, and a bowl of olives with cheese as well. Now working our way around the seat, starting on my left side, you can see your armrest raises here. Behind you is a nice little cubby, although it's only really accessible in bed mode. In front of that is your literature pocket, which comes with your safety card, and of course your air sickness bag. One of the main things that I couldn't help but think about is imagine if we did have to use these slides, I'll bet that slide from the upper deck is a big, big drop. You're also able to raise and lower this partition next to you, although given the fact that there was quite a bit open on this suite, I didn't see the need to make it even more open. 
Now there's a couple places where you can adjust the seat itself. On the armrest you have a few different preset modes if you want to set it into a relax mode, sleep mode, eating mode, or what have you. Additionally, in that armrest here you're going to find that there's an additional screen. That screen, once set up, becomes another way to adjust your seat and it's super nice if you're in bed mode or relaxed and maybe a little bit further from those buttons. In there you're also going to find the in-flight headphones and a charging port. Then going directly in front of you, you have a TV here which is absolutely massive. Next to that is a lamp that doesn't really do much but look good. And next to that is a universal charging port, which I did use for my laptop, but if you do have someone sitting in the partner seat with you, it also gives them a chance to charge their devices while you use the other power port next to your right side. Just inside of that, you're going to find the tray table, which comes out with a push of a button, slides out. This tray table was absolutely massive, and the wood finishings on it are great. And I can't wait to show you that a little bit more once we get in the flight. Off to your right side, you have another literature pocket. This one's a little bit smaller, so I wasn't able to store too much in here. But there's also another button to help get your seat raised for landing, as well as adjusting the lights above your bed. Just next to that, there's another cubby where you can access the in-flight TV remote, which was great to have, especially in a relaxed position, considering how far that TV was. In addition to that is a nice bottle of water that came with the seats as well. Now I mentioned I didn't really like the A380 windows because of their depth. One thing I do find cool is the different ways that you can adjust the windows. As you see here, you can adjust each one individually and there's a couple different filters. Like this one here, which just filters the light, reduces it a little bit so you don't have direct sunlight hitting you. In addition, there's a button to lower all three at one time. And once those are fully down, if you continue to hit that, you get the full blackout curtains as well. Now the suite has a large number of lights from every angle, in addition to that is this reading light that comes over your right shoulder, in addition to the one that's over your head for when you're in the full lie flat position. Now the attention to detail does not stop in the seat. The main atrium here at the top of the stairs has this wonderful light here with the detail added to it. It's just one of those things that's extra nice. They obviously could have just put a white light in there, but they decided to make it a little bit more luxurious and homey for those passengers here. There is also the grand staircase with some art at the bottom, and behind me right now is where you find the main decorative wall in the entrance to this cabin. And of course, on these double-decker airplanes, one of my favorite things is just to go down the stairs, because how often do you get to go downstairs in an airplane? One of the cool things they have here on the bulkhead is just some nice art. Here's a great picture from the city of Doha. I will say that until we got in the air and the air conditioning got going, it did get pretty warm in the cabin, and because there was no overhead air vents, it was pretty hard to manage that based on your preferences. But after that, probably my favorite lab review of all time, let's go check out the lavatory in the first class cabin on this A380. First impressions when you walk in, there is just endless space. I mean, it didn't even feel like I was on an airplane when I walked through this door. You can see the toilet here is under this cushion seat, so if you are looking for some place to sit and maybe get some shoes on or pajamas on or whatever, there is plenty of spaces for you to just sit and relax. And if that's not enough, you do have an entire counter space next to you with extra cushion, extra padding. So if you are trying to sit there, maybe tie your shoes or whatever it might be, you do have a place to do that. They've got some flowers, which is a nice touch to have in a bathroom. It just makes it, you know, not a white box. Coat hanger, amenities, everything you could need to get ready for the day or ready for bed while you're sitting in this cabin. And in a box was a bunch of roses, which they did actually have spots for in the bathroom, but prior to departure, they actually had not set up yet. Next to that is a ginormous sink by any standards, especially on an airplane. I especially enjoyed the waterfall sink feature. And next to that, instead of paper towels, they actually had hand towels, which was nice. And just in front of that, in a drawer, was all the amenities that you could need. Mouthwash, toothbrushes, all that kind of stuff, so that you could arrive feeling 100% fresh. While I was still waiting for the rest of the cabin to board, I decided to open up my tray table. Like I mentioned earlier here, this tray table is massive, especially because since there is the partner seat there, it's meant to really fit two people's place settings, and there is more than enough space for it to do that. I instead actually just used the side table for the time being and saved the tray table for once we got in flight. That way I had a little more room. But here you can see the diptyque amenity kit that we were given, and inside was a 
great number of basics, not anything super special, but the quality is great. And the scent of this just reminds me of being on board Qatar Airways. They then came around with a set of pajamas and we were able to basically pick our own size, which is nice because you're not stuck with some double XL pajamas that are way too big and don't fit you whatsoever. Just prior to pushback, the flight attendants came around with Arabic coffee and dates, which I gladly accepted. And as we taxied out, I enjoyed that, where they picked it up just before the actual departure. Now as far as the Seatback TV goes, you'll notice it's not touchscreen. There are some buttons along the edge, but that's about it. So to manage that, you do have your Seatback TV remote, which if you've watched my Q-Suites video, you know is basically just another screen to the point where you can have one thing on your TV and an entirely separate program showing on your remote. But my number one feature on board this airplane is the A380 camera views. I just love being able to look at the external cameras from a number of different views. And when this is available on airplanes such as the A350 or the A380, it's greatly appreciated. Now I don't want to go too in depth into the in-flight TV. If you do want to see more of that, go ahead and check out my A350 Q Suites video where we did a full deep dive into the in-flight entertainment system. But I do want to mention that the Oryx One program that Qatar uses is probably the best in-flight entertainment that I have seen to date. What you find is not only full seasons of some TV shows, but multiple seasons of certain TV shows and endless movies in a number of different languages. So really, it's on you at this point if you get bored on board this flight. What I will say though is that the A350 did seem to have a little bit more options than the A380. Maybe I just was looking in the wrong places, but it doesn't seem like it's exactly the same list of TV shows and movies between different types of aircraft. So on the right side you have your Seatback TV remote, which is a fantastic remote, but on your left side, like I mentioned earlier, you do have another remote which is going to control the individual seat controls. You can see from here you can go to things like the seat presets, you can move different things individually, you can also adjust the in-seat lighting. This remote was a little bit less responsive unfortunately, but it was nice because rather than having to push the buttons if you were reclined or whatnot, you just had to access this remote and you could adjust anything that you needed to adjust.
Now, unfortunately, this flight from Doha to Bangkok is only about six hours, whereas I could probably spend 20 hours straight on board this aircraft, but I did take full advantage of what I did have available to me. First of which, once we got in the air, it was time to get cozy once the mood lighting came on. So first thing I did was lower the thinner of the window shades so that I still had some sunlight coming in, but it was definitely filtered. After that, I headed to the restroom to put on my in-flight pajamas. Now, Qatar Airways pajamas are super comfortable in my opinion, especially the slippers get my top vote. After that, I found the cabin a little too warm to actually use the blanket, but with the leg rest up, I was plenty comfortable. This seat is absolutely massive. And now Qatar's in-flight Wi-Fi service, which is, in my opinion, one of the fastest Wi-Fi services that you're going to find. The only bummer on this flight is that while we were traveling over India, we were in a mega outage zone, so we weren't actually able to use it. As far as the in-flight Wi-Fi goes, there's a number of different ways to access it. You can do things like messaging. You can also purchase certain sizes of packages, up to full flight packages. The benefit, however, of traveling in the first class cabin is that shortly after departure, the flight attendants came around with these special vouchers. These vouchers were good for 200 megabytes of Wi-Fi, which maybe won't last you the whole flight depending on what you're doing, but it was plenty to browse throughout the flight and get as much done as I needed. So if connecting was as easy as typing in the code and setting up an account, and once that was done, I was connected with my Wi-Fi for the entire flight as long as I used less than 200 megabytes. After that point, I could purchase more if I decided to do so. After that it was snack time. I went with a sparkling water as my choice along with my bowl of nuts, but after that it was time for our hot beverage. I went with my absolute favorite, the Karak Chai Tea, which came with a million choices of cookies. I ended up going with the fruit and lemon cookie, which complemented the Karak Chai perfectly. Now there's obviously some mixed opinions on these suites. Obviously they're ginormous and you have a ton of space to yourself and obviously the fact that there's only eight people seated in the first class cabin gives it a very intimate feel. However, there are large openings to enter the suites and so it doesn't give you as private of a feel. Fortunately, the seat on the other side of the aisle for me remained clear and so it felt extra private in my seat, but I'm not quite sure had there been a person there just how private it would have felt in my seat. Now you can see, even with the tray table pulled out, just how much room there is next to that. So while you enjoy your food, you don't have to worry about a lack of space to get some work done. You can see just where my laptop is there. I could even put it on the other side table. But then it was time for our first course. For example, our starter today was a few different choices. I went with the seafood option, which was a sea scallop on a bed of grains. My first course today was absolutely fantastic. It was some more smoked salmon, but this time with caviar. The nice thing with caviar is they give you these extra special spoons not to taint the taste of it, but it was absolutely fantastic, and if you do like caviar, this is the first course for you. But shortly thereafter came what I chose as one of my courses, which was the mezza platter, which I always enjoy when I'm traveling through the Middle East. It comes with, of course, the bab ganoush, the hummus, and the other greens mix, which came with also some pita bread and other bread rolls on the side. And then to wrap everything all up, I went with a nice Thai basmati rice main course, which was absolutely fantastic. They came around with a wide assortment of sauces and let me pick which sauces I wanted to put on my rice, and I mixed some of those in. It was absolutely delicious and I was stuffed. But of course, along with that, had to come some sparkling water and one of Qatar's famous mocktails. I ended up going with the pineapple margarita for my flight today. Up next, it wouldn't be the 21st century unless you used as many screens as possible. So while I had the map going on my remote set out next to me, I was also working on a video directly in front of me, while even further in front of me was my in-flight entertainment screen, and across the aisle from me, for some extra bonus points, was the in-flight camera. The camera was nice to have because obviously as you can see here, I couldn't really see much out the window, it was pretty hazy, and unfortunately I couldn't see the giant wing and engines of the A380. Then of course it was time for dessert. Going to Southeast Asia I had to get the pandan dessert. The pandan was a nice little creamy part in the middle here. It's an amazing fruit. They make great desserts from it as well. I got some mango ice cream, some mango along with other assorted fruit on what seemed like a bed of a graham cracker type substance. To drink along with that, another TWG tea, this time the vanilla bourbon tea which was astonishing. Unfortunately, all good things must come to an end, so as we prepared for our arrival into Bangkok, I raised my window shades and got a beautiful view of Southeast Asia as we made our approach.
Now I do like if you're traveling Qatar first or business class, they always come around with these nice chocolates prior to arrival. There are always two different types of chocolates. Today's were more of a truffle sorts and they were delicious. Now I will say that one of the main bummers on arrival is just because of how scratched up these windows were, it was kind of hard to get it to focus for a little while, but I really wanted to enjoy our full arrival into Bangkok and Southeast Asia. Finally, I was able to get it to focus, sit back and relax, and enjoy my arrival into Thailand. Now welcome to the unassuming home of the Asian A380s. Here in Bangkok you'll see Korean Air A380s, Qatar A380s, Asiana A380s, Emirates A380s. Really there was no shortage of views as the sun set on our taxi into the gate here in Bangkok. But with that it is my time for my final thoughts on our Qatar A380 first class suites. Now in my opinion, nobody does it like Qatar these days. The luxury that you can find on board a Qatar aircraft is just completely unmatched from the moment you show up to the airport to the moment you leave the airport. The lounges, the crew, the in-flight service, both hard and soft product are fantastic and cannot be beat. So their first class product completely matches that as well. If you do get the chance to fly on it, I definitely recommend you take advantage of it, especially while American Airlines is giving away these tickets for 50,000 miles. It's a great value on this six hour flight if you are trying to get to Bangkok. But let me know your thoughts below on Qatar Airways, their A380s, and the first class product. I'm very curious what you think, but I would 100% do this flight again. And now while I wait for everyone else to deplane, a couple last things that I noticed upon waiting to deplane this A380. First off, the middle seats. If you are traveling with someone, you don't get window access in the middle, obviously, but it is a nice place for you to hang out and that middle partition does come down to give you a nice shared space. Obviously, it's still open to the aisle on both sides, but it does make it so you can stay close to the person next to you. In addition, there's not a great spot to keep suitcases, carry-on bags of that size while you're in flight. Instead, at the front of the cabin, there's this closet where they tag your bag and they can put it up here. So after the flight, I did have to go grab my bag considering the crew is busy deplaning. In addition, I also noticed, very last thing before I got off the airplane, that there was a coat cabinet at the front of each seat. Maybe if I had had a coat or maybe some more time on board, I would have found this earlier, but I didn't really have a need for it today anyway. Now this time of year in Thailand is a very warm time of the year and unfortunately it just didn't seem like the airport's air conditioning could quite keep up considering that pretty much the entire time we were walking through the airport, it was extremely warm. That being said, the Bangkok airport does have some pretty nice things going for it, so stay tuned for some videos I have coming up departing out of the Bangkok airport where we can explore it more, but there is just some fun art. You can see here this nice temple style building above us, and as we make our way out to immigration, you will notice more art. In addition, because the windows on the sides of this pathway off to customs are clear, you do get some great views of the other aircraft in your wing as you head out to immigration. Now I will say one of the bummers about immigration here in Bangkok airport is that there really is only one central hub. 
depending on which gate you arrive from, you'll be funneled into the central hub through immigration, which made it so that the lines for immigration were extremely long. The benefit, however, of being in first or business class on whatever airline you may have come in from gives you what they call fast track service, which means that you can go through a separate lane and it does get you through immigration much faster and onto baggage claim. By the time I got out to baggage claim through that fast track service, actually, the bags were already rolling on the carousel from our flight, so I was quickly able to grab my bag and head right on my way. On my way out to the curb though, I couldn't help but think about how wonderful this experience was. Qatar Airways, the A380 first class, it was just everything you could want out of a trip, and I had a ton of fun. I would have done it a million times over if I had the chance to. But in the meantime, I welcome you all to Bangkok, Thailand. Stay posted for some more videos coming up soon, but I appreciate each and every one of you guys. Safe travels, and I'll see you guys later.